Warning, I am not a professional painter, so do not take what I say as gospel. I am but a humble man who enjoys painting toy soldiers and talking about it. Is it red again? Yeah, just leave it to red, it's good. Ha! <laughs> oh. Oh, it's sound activated. Yes! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what it isn't good for. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Anyways, okay, well. Hi. Obviously, it's no secret that I do enjoy playing Warhammer, as you can tell from all the videos that is out, out there of me playing the game Warhammer and stuff like that. Just goddamn, dude, I just, I just love painting so much. Did it change? However, one of the things that does make me nervous, and I'm pretty sure that anybody that does like painting or hobbying and painting miniatures and stuff, you probably understand what I'm talking about here, is painting a centerpiece model. So for those of you who don't know, a centerpiece model is a model in your army that focuses people's attention. It's like the best painted model in your army, and it's usually something big, something dramatic that really pops out on the table. Now, out of my armies with Tyranids, Grey Knights, Harlequins, and Chaos Demons, I have a small amount of centerpiece models. Tyranids, I have the Swarm Lord, which was painted by Gold Standard Studios. Harlequins, I recently stripped away the original paint scheme I did with them and went with a galactic vaporwave aesthetic that I really enjoyed, but the army really doesn't have any centerpieces. The last centerpiece like army or the centerpiece models that I did were the Keepers of Secrets and the Contorted Epitome, and that was like, I, I think like oh, maybe a little bit under a year ago, maybe a couple months ago, I can't remember exactly, but it's been a while since you know I've done those models and I feel like I should probably move on and expand on that and try to paint up another centerpiece model. And I wanted to do one of a model that I absolutely love and that is the Lord of Change. So this is the Lord of Change, also called Lord of Chonk, Chicken, Big Bird, and my personal favorite, Slut. Now, I absolutely love this model. It's gorgeous. It's an Age of Sigmar slash Warhammer 40K model. And since it's an Age of Sigmar model, it's already an S tier model when it comes to 40K miniatures, along with Bellacore and almost any other Chaos Demon model that's out there, which are honestly what I would call C tier Age of Sigmar models. That's what I call S tier models in 40K. They're actually just C tier Age of Sigmar models. Now, just like the last video that I did with painting, I don't have a lot of time to paint like literally for this video after I'm done with this I have to go like fly over to San Francisco and do some stuff over there so like I'm gonna be busy the entire time so really I only have like three days to paint the centerpiece model I I'm hoping that I can get it done spoiler alert, I do because I'm awesome so that's basically my caveat is that I have three days to finish painting up this model and that's pretty much it. So without further ado, let's get started and let's paint up this Lord of Change. Also, B put this model together while I was editing my StarCraft video and I can see that his wing is broken. I'm not pointing any fingers, but... we're going to be using all the techniques that we have learned since we first started. You know, we're gonna be doing things like dry brushing, edge highlighting, stippling, things like using inks, using different hobbying tools, using transparent paints. We're gonna be doing all that stuff onto this model and just basically using all of the stuff that we've learned in order to make this model like really come to life. So first we're going to prime the model outside using some good old Rust-Oleum 2X matte primer. Uh, this is something that you can buy at Walmart. Literally, this is like the only primer that I use. I like in the first video that I made, I was like, yeah, let's use this Vallejo primer. Fuck that. No, never use that. Just, just use, just go outside, spray it with a rattle can. It's faster. You don't even need full coverage. Just go out there and just start priming that bastard up. Don't do this. Th this right here, 
do not do this. Now, since we don't have much time, we're also just going to use a hair dryer to speed up the drying time. Honestly, a hair dryer is like one of the best tools that you can have when you are painting and hobbying. Like not only does it speed up your, your paint drying, obviously, but you can also use it to push back in and kind of mold in your resin off of like, you know, your forge rolled models and things like that to bend them back into place because you left them inside your car for too long. And if you're using a technical paint, you can use your hair dryer to heat up the texture so you can get more cracks to appear. We're going to start testing out some colors on some prime spoons to see how our paints are going to react. And the colors that we're going to be working with are a lot. We're gonna be using a lot of colors and most of the colors we're going to be using are inks and not acrylic paints. And the reason why we're using inks is because one, I have a wider color of inks that I can use compared to acrylics and two, inks have a large amount of pigmentation when coming out of an airbrush. Normally when you use acrylic paints and you start lowering the opacity by adding water inside of an airbrush, it starts to dilute the color a little bit. And like, you, you'll see that a lot when you're trying to use like your paints and you, you'll put inside the airbrush, you'll add some water in there, add some like flow improver, add in some thinner, and then you spray it out and it looks very dulled down and you can still build up that color by just like adding in less water until it becomes more opaque and stuff like that. But that takes up a lot of time. So instead we're going to go around that and not do that style. So then that way we can use these inks instead, which are going to benefit us a lot and help us save time when it comes to airbrushing. And so now that we're done with these and we are able to look at our different colors and see what's, uh, see what's going on here, we can truly understand that these uh, actually didn't help me at all and were just a waste of time. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna throw these out the trash, we don't need them. Now the airbrush that we're using is the GSI Creos PS289 from Mr. Hobby. What is that name? Like, <laughs> this is, damn it, damn it, damn it, yeah, damn it, damn it, damn it. Now I've used things like Iwata Eclipses, I've used like spray gunners. I, in fact, I think I've owned like two Iwata Eclipses because I like I pretty much just fucked them up and like they, they just don't work anymore because they're so fucked up. I went with the Creos 289, which is uh, an airbrush that Kenny from Next Level Painting actually recommended to me. And ever since I started using it, I absolutely love it. I haven't turned back. I haven't looked back at any other airbrush. This is the one that I use because I absolutely love this airbrush. It's so good. Also, if you guys want more advanced tips and techniques when it comes to painting to get better, I highly recommend checking out Kenny at twitch.tv forward slash next level painting and Wyatt at twitch.tv forward slash jack of clubs painting. They're both super knowledgeable about it and this isn't a sponsor. They're just good friends and I really like their paint styles. Now, the best part about this airbrush is that it has a dial near the tip where you can just adjust the airflow of what comes out of your airbrush. So you can keep the same level of what your compressor is using while still controlling the amount of air being pushed out of your airbrush. At least that's how I think it works. I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Just throwing bullshit out. Yeah, it's like sex. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So first things first, we're going to use this Daler Rowney white ink that I use to do all of my zenithal highlighting because it's a very smooth and non-splotchy white. And the buildup of color from it is absolutely awesome. So we're going to be using this ink on our model, but we're not really doing a zenithal highlight. Uh. <laughs> is that gross? <laughs> So for this, I usually just do like six drops of the paint inside of my airbrush and then put like half that amount of flow improver, a Vallejo flow improver. Vallejo flow improver is like a fucking miracle worker. I've used airbrush thinner before and it just doesn't really like do anything for me. Things will just become like too thin or too opaque or not opaque enough, too transparent, whatever. I would use thinner and it just wasn't working out for me. So instead I've been using this uh, Vallejo flow improver and it's just like, dude, it's so good. I don't even use thinner for my airbrush anymore. I literally just use this Vallejo flow improver and some water and that's it. That's all I use now. However, if you are using things like, you know, Citadel's uh, colored paints, like they actually have really good pigments. Like it's actually wild how pigmented the colors are on the Citadel paints. But the only problem is that these things are thick. Like the paints are thick as Fuck, like I'm fat, this is like fatter. This is so thick. Every time that I try to use this inside of an airbrush, it always either clogs it, no matter how much thinner I use, or it becomes too transparent. It just never worked out. So I just, I don't use Citadel 
paints in my airbrushes at all anymore. Like it's just, it's a no go for me. It's just too much hassle. Instead, I just use like Monument Hobbies uh, paints instead because they're a little bit thinner and they still have high pigmentation because it's a pro acrylic. So that's why I like using those more instead of the Citadel paints. You could probably still use them with thinners and everything like that. It just, to me, it was too much of a hassle. So I just chose not to use it anymore. So Xenthal highlighting is just spraying down at your model to make it look like light is hitting it from the top for your colors to give it a nice transition if you're painting like a single color. But we're not doing that. We're just using this white ink and building up an undercoat of where we want our colors to pop the most and what areas we want our colors to be the brightest. So if we were to paint on top of black, then what happens is that the colors that are going on top of the black primer or your black undercoat, it's going to be darker than if you were to paint over like something that's white because the undercoat is so dark, especially if you're doing something with uh, more transparent paints, right? If you're lowering the opacity on your paints through your airbrush or even on your regular brush and you're thinning it down and you're painting over black, then it's gonna become a lot darker. Whereas if you use something like a white ink or like a white acrylic, um, just basically like anything that's bright, you can even use something like gray, whatever you want, it's going to make the colors a lot brighter. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're still gonna leave a lot of the recesses more dark, so then that way we can get some nice transitioning and that's gonna really benefit us since we are using inks. And after I'm done doing this, it's time to put the base coat onto the model. So first we're going to use Monument Hobbies turquoise for the model's chest. And to do that, we're going to put that into our airbrush and add some water to lower its opacity a bit and then adding some Vallejo Flow Improver. And then go back if we need to with some Monument Hobbies transparent black to bring in more shadows as a kind of cheat code to speed up our painting process. So after we're done putting in those highlights, now it's time to use our inks. What? What's so funny? The color changed. <laughs> now, as far as inks go, I enjoy using uh, Liquitex more than I like using De La Rowney. Now, now, they're both good and I use them for different things. However, when it comes to Liquitex, I find it a lot easier to use inside of an airbrush than I find De La Rowney to be. Like, you could probably still use both of them. It's just that I find Liquitex to be a lot easier. Sometimes with De La Rowney, it just like, it comes out and it looks like really like watered down and splotchy. Um, so it just really depends. Uh, but like, yeah, I like using Liquitex more than them. You know, there's a video of Mac from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It, it, I think it's for like men's health. It's like a magazine video. And he's like, quality is overrated. It's all about quantity. Go for quality over quantity. That's what I know this is bull No, you go for quantity. Quality is overrated. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't, but I know that you told me it. Yeah, yeah, that shit, that, that shit spoke to me on like a different level. <laughs> like, I was like, whoa, he's right. <laughs> now, the first ink that we're gonna be applying onto the model is this one. It's called Puff Fat Phthalo Kyanine Blue Green Shade. Puffalo Kyanine Blue Green Shade. Now you sound stupid. Yep, again, we're putting in six drops of the ink and then three drops of Flow Improver and then we're good to go. We're spraying from the turquoise over to the blue and what's also great about these inks is that you can see on the bottle it actually tells you if it's transparent or semi-opaque. Semi-opaque means it's going to act more of like a solid color whereas transparent is going to act more of a filter. And so when we do hit those darker areas of the model that we didn't hit with the white, it's going to naturally transition without us doing anything extra. And that's why these inks are really good, especially when you're blending in colors because they're more transparent than your uh, acrylic paints. You, you know, you can water it down with some water in order to get it, but then you're still uh, diluting your colors. But with these, it's a lot more simple. So you can do like these nice blends of color because they are transparent. You're kind of just adding a filter onto like the ends of where your color is ending off at. And because you're using these white undercoats, because these things are so highly pigmented, you actually get incredibly uh, like a, a super huge amount of uh, bright pops of color on your model because you have that white undercoat while using a transparent ink. And you'll see it here as we use this quin, quin, quina, quinacridone magenta. Quinacridone, who comes up with these names? Like it's just, just it's just magenta. Yeah, it's literally yeah. just magenta. Quinacridone, hmm. I would love this to be a quinacridone magenta or a, 
Aneurysm blue. We're using this on the wings and it's going to blend in with the blue and add in another color because when you mix blue with magenta, you get this deep purple. So by using this inks, we're able to create more colors and do these really smooth transitions without, you know, like doing wet blending or anything like that. It's all very, very simple. It makes it more simplified and just makes it easier to get these really, really nice gradients and good transitions. And we're also going to hit the legs with the same color as well right before we paint his little feetsies with some yellow orange azo. And now right here, I thought that this would look better, but like the yellow from this ink is actually, it, like it came out a lot more than I thought it was going to. So uh, that, that was bad. So instead what we're going to do, we're gonna use this ink and then we also use this uh, Daler Rowney Flame Orange as like a filter to go over this yellow in order to make it darker and make it like more of like a reddish orange. And then we're gonna do kind of the same thing with the tips of the wings, but not as much so then it could have a little bit more pop of yellow. So already we got these amazing blends of color with very minimal effort. And with that, our base coat is done so we can move on to the next part of the model, which is detailing. And to fix up the model a bit, we're going to add in some Liquitex Turquoise Deep over the Monument Hobbies Turquoise to give it more of a tint and also dry brush his chest with Monument Hobbies Gray Blue. And immediately I can see that I've made a mistake by not varnishing the model at all, which I should have done. I can already see the paint starting to come off because I haven't sealed it, which is a big boo-boo on my end, but there's not much I can do about it now because, you know, varnishing can take up to an entire day to finish drying, and so we're just, you know, we're just gonna go for it. So for this portion, we're just using some Citadel Metallics to finish off the model. Metallic. Metallic. These metallic paints are nice. Like they are, they, they, they're, they're, they're good paints. Like they, they look really pretty. They have really nice colors, but they're also kind of distracting because they're so bright. It's hard to highlight them. It doesn't make any sense to highlight them. Now you can use them on like small things like little rings or like small little like uh, nose piercings or whatever, like pierce, whatever the fuck, like you can use that for, you can use these for that. It's actually better to use like your primed model, like prime it black and then dry brush it with a silver or like a silver metallic and then wash it with like an oil wash. And then after that, go back and dry brush it again with a metallic paint, like a silver metallic mixed in with a color that you want. And then that will make it a lot better than just using these metallic paints, which I did use. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not happy about that. Don't do what I did. Don't do what I do. I'm garbage, I'm, I'm poo poo, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible, I'm a poo poo terrible man. But put, right here. Poo poo man. And so we're just adding the metallics onto the model for the armor using Citadel Rune Lord Brass and painting the trim with Screaming Bell. For the shaft of the staff, I used the same scheme I used on my Harlequin boats that gave it a more galactic look by hitting it with some white ink in places where I wanted the color to pop, uh, Liquitex Deep Violet on the brighter areas, some Turbo Dork Turbo Shifts with Ice to Never and Blue Raspberry to give it a sparkling sheen when the light hits it, and then tinting that with Liquitex Dio Oxys purple. We also use some Monument Hobbies Transparent Black to add some more dark colors onto the staff before using our airbrush and throttling it so then it just splatters out white paint and hitting our model with it. You do all that and boom, you've got a galactic looking staff that we then use Screaming Bell and Citadel Balthazar Gold for its metallic pieces. For the staff's inside piece, I use Liquitex Turquoise Deep by putting that on my wet palette and using that as a kind of ink or wash to get into the crevices of the staff while still keeping a high pigment to the color. And so now we just finish up with some dry brushing using Monument Hobbies Gray Blue. Going from there, we just do some edge highlighting for every single feather on the model. Everyone. I didn't do it. I did not do that. I only did it for one wing because it just it was so tedious and it took such a long time. And you know, we only have a three day period to do this. So I just ended up just doing that. Next, we're going to wash the metallics because it's a little bit too bright. And to do that, we're going to use some Mr. Hobby weathering color. So this is kind of like an oil wash. And if you're gonna to use this, I highly suggest that you also get some uh, solvent 110 from Mr. Hobby as well. This is even got a beat in it. You hear that? You hear that? 
Uh, now the reason why I'm using this instead of something like a uh, Nuln Oil or like a Druki Violet or some type of other wash that Citadel makes or things like that is because it's an oil wash. And oil washes, they, they flow a lot better than a regular like more acrylic wash, like things like your uh, Army Painter washes, like your blue washes or things like that. This is gonna flow a lot better and that's why I like using it um, more than, you know, uh, those. And also since it's an oil wash, you can also use this solvent in order to kind of like wipe it away because it's an oil. And since oil washes take a long time to dry, you can just take a makeup sponge or like a Q-tip and then just wipe it off. So then that way you're not completely dousing your model in a wash and then it dries very quickly and you're like, oh no, what do I do? You use an oil wash instead and you can wipe it off very, very easily. Now you're going to mix the oil wash with some solvent. I, I don't really know what the ratio is. Just kind of play around with it until you get it right and then put that on your model. You can use this for things like panel lining or to get into the recesses of your model and it's just going to flow super well onto it, which is what we're going to do with our slut. Slut bird. Bird slut. And with that, the model is done and it's time to move on to our basing until Amy? Yeah. Hey, so the mic won't be able to stream on Saturday. Huh? The mic won't be able to stream on Saturday. So that kind of means that you uh I have to play on Saturday? Yeah, against Garrett. And cause I already asked a bunch of people too, I think. So I have to finish this guy and then paint Bellacor and all the other stuff that I have to, and edit this video and all that stuff and go to BAO next week? Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll try. Let's, well, now see. If, let's. Okay. Now for our basing, we're gonna be using some milli putt and these little rollers that I got from uh, Green Stuff World. Look like that. There you go. They have like these really cool designs on it. You can see that I have some Millie put on it already, but uh, I've actually never used these before. Uh, you could probably use this as like a. Fucking beat someone with it. I wonder if you can hit someone so hard that it imprints the design on. <laughs> I've actually never used these before and I've been wanting to use them. So, you know, I guess what better time to use them than now, you know, on a centerpiece model, just try it out. Fuck it, who cares? We're gonna do it. We're also using some of the 3D printed books that they sell as well and some candles to decorate the base a little bit. We're just going to pull out a large amount of Millie putt and knead it until it's a solid color before pressing it onto our base and and then using the roller to roll the pattern onto the base. Now there's gonna be some excess on the side and we're just going to cut it off using a hobby knife and for shits and giggles, I molded the excess into a stupid looking like runic tomb slab thingy and rolling the design onto it as well and then set it aside to wait for it to dry. And while that's happening, we've already primed these books and are going to get them ready using some oil washes. Oil paints. So if you haven't seen how to do this already, you can check out any of the videos here. What, is there a space here for there them is, to put? Yes. Yeah, there is. You can check out any of the videos here and it'll kind of teach you how to do, you know, washes with oil paints. And we're gonna use these in order to create a custom wash instead of like going out and buying, you know, a Druki Violet, Nuln Oil, or whatever the hell else Citadel sells for washes, even Mr. Hobby. You know, we can use these instead and they're a lot cheaper to use. Plus, just like the Mr. Hobby one that I talked about earlier, like this thing, it's an oil wash, which means that's going to flow infinitely better than your acrylic washes instead. So, you know, these are gonna be incredibly great. And also, if you mess up, it's fine. You could just wipe it off uh, using some solvent and wipe off the, the oil wash. We're just going to squeeze a bit of this paint out and then use some mineral spirits uh, in order to mix them together. And you wanna get the mixture to a good consistency by washing it on the side and looking at the transparency until you get the right opacity that you want. We're gonna wash these books with these colors by slabbing it on and once it's dry, hitting it with a white dry brush to make the details come back. And because I'm running out of time, I just sprayed the candles a dark red. Okay, let's see if this is dry. How do you tell? It should be dry. 
Yes. After priming the base, we're going to spray it with some Monument Hobbies Turquoise at a low opacity by using water and build up that color until it pops. Use a blue wash for the inside runic text and then dry brush it with gray blue. And there we go. A centerpiece, Lord of Change. But we can't rest there because we have to paint some more stuff. We gotta paint some pink cores and most importantly, we've got to paint Bellacore. We're going to blow through these for the sake of time here, but these pink cores, we're just going to put some detailing on them, add in some oil washes and boom, done. There we go. Now it's time for Bellacore. So to contrast the Lord of Change, I wanted to uh, make Bellacore darker. Like I wanted to, because I, I haven't done like a grim dark look in a while. Most of my stuff is very bright pops of color. So I was like, you know what? Let's go grim dark. Let's try to build, let's try to paint this guy super dark um, and like really, really make the blacks just very, very, very like in depth, right? So that's what we decided to do with Bellacore. Now I didn't record the airbrushing portion because I just literally didn't have time. But what we did is uh, we built up the color using some blue black and some gray blue that we then used to build up the color. And then we used some Monument Hobbies blue in order to transition everything over. And what's great is that since these are all blue colors, blue, black, gray, blue, and blue, since they all have like the same base, they're gonna do like a pretty nice transition. And that's kind of what we did with Bellacore. And then at the very end, after we were done building up those colors, going from this to this to this, we then hit it with our favorite blue color, aneurysm blue, in order to give it just like a little bit more pop of color. And while I'm dumping out these colors into my hobo bucket, I'm not afraid of mixing these colors together inside the pot because I'm painting at a low opacity. So it's all building into a dark, rich blue. And then afterwards, I used this transparent black in order to go back if there was a little bit too much blue. And I added this inside of it in order to like, you know, darken up those areas a little bit more. Now that we have our base coat done, I'm then going to get out my oil paints and create some more washes of black and blue. And we're literally going to cover this model in a wash. We're then going to take the armor and dry brush silver onto it and then hit it with a blue wash. So then afterwards, we can use a silver metallic mixed with gray blue and then dry brush brush back onto this model before hitting it with a Mr. Hobby wash in the recesses and painting black onto the tips of the claws on the armor. Once the model's dry, we're then going to paint black back onto the wings of the model where the spines are to give it more contrast before finally dry brushing it with some gray blue very softly. So then we don't get a lot of streaking on the wings, which would have been better if there was an actual edge highlight instead, but we don't have the time. So dry brushing is just going to have to do. And there we go. Bellacore is done. In three days, we painted two centerpiece models with the Lord of Change and Bellacore along with some pink horrors and the results are pretty good. I love how the models look and they're probably my best painted models and my favorite ones so far. There are some things that I learned doing this project. I should have varnished my models after I'm done airbrushing them to stop the paint from coming off. Uh, I need to get better at doing my washes and find some time to really hone in on edge highlighting more so I don't have to overly rely on dry brushing all the time. I also want to go back and do more work on Bellacore, like making his base better by adding in some resin for ice or something just to, you know, make his base look better and probably go back and get rid of this stupid, like thin your paints marine and actually spending time on him. But having to paint that extra, you know, that extra piece on a model that I don't really care about is pretty, it's it's annoying. It's fucking annoying. Yeah, that's it for this video. If you guys liked it, let me know in the comment section below if you guys like these types of hobbying videos. If you guys don't like it, that's fine too. Look how sweaty my hands are. It's gross. But yeah, you know, these hobbying videos are a lot of fun to do. So if you guys like watching them, let me know. Um, if you guys want to, I could do some more of them. But that is it. Uh, they're a lot of fun. And I hope that you guys have a great time. Remember, I'm not a good, I'm not the best painter out there. So just, you know, take that, take what I just said with a grain of salt. Maybe just delete it from your brain. Without that, with, without, um, bye. <laughs>